welcome to In the Stacks. My name's Julia and this is Christina. And this is our friend Amir, Amir Lloyd from Wales in the UK. So Amir, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, yeah, so my name's um, Emir, Emir Lloyd from um, Aberystwyth um, Library, um, which is part of the Ker County of Ceredigion Library Service. So we've got um, six libraries within our authority, and Aberystwyth is the um, well main library, the biggest library. Then, yeah. So I've been working, I've been working to the library authority since two thousand and three. So um, I started off doing a few nights and stuff on Saturday mornings and things. And I've gradually worked up the ladder. So I'm currently Getting the close branch. To 20 years. Yeah, I know. It's, it's scary. <laughs> I'm a manager of this branch now. Oh, yes. excellent. Good for you. Well, That's yes, awesome. yes. It took me 20 uh, years, but I'm here now. <laughs> in the stacks, we talk about books that we've read, just read, or are starting to read. Some of the books that we read, have reread, uh, books that are on our to-be-read list. So it's just conversation about books. You know, library Any book that you want to talk about at all, your favorite book, your least favorite book, we don't care. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, my first book is called Lady Franklin of Russell Square. And it's about John Franklin um, of the Arctic, ex the Franklin expedition to the Arctic and um, how that was a doomed expedition. And she, in this book, there's like letters from him and um, actual like, telegrams and stuff that he had sent her. And those are interspersed through the book, but it's a fictionalization of her life and how she was dealing with the fact that he was gone and disappeared and the whole country was like really kind of rallying behind her. And she was like this real dramatic figure, you know, this widow who's, or this woman who's waiting for her husband to return. And, um, but it's, yeah, it's pretty good. I really like it. And I like books that are historical, I like historical fiction and I like historical mysteries, um, but I like accurate history, you know, like uh, history yeah. that then I, after I've read the book, of course, now I have to go and learn everything there is to know about Franklin's expedition. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you, uh, I, I'm, I am similar. I like to, I uh, I do like reading, you know, some, some fiction, but I like to read nonfiction mostly. So, so what's your book? Well, uh, well, um, as I said, I, I like um, non-fiction. So most probably you haven't heard of this person, but I, I really love, I enjoy this book. Um, it's um, Nigel Owens. He's a um, rugby union referee. Okay, all right. Yeah, yep, um, rugby. Um, yeah um, um, Canada has got a team. I don't think yeah, you're very good. <laughs> I, I don't think you're very good at rugby. But anyway, <laughs> you, have, you have a team, I think. I think you beat Wales once, I think. I'm not 100%, but anyway. Um, <laughs> so, Managed to be Wales ones. I think that's excellent. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> um, so um, um, his um, he's a, a referee for for rugby, and um, he's a um, he was born in um, in um, Carmarthenshire, was which is the next county um, next to us, and um, he um, he was the first. Um, so he came out as um, um, gay. Um, a few years back, and he was the first. So he's the first um, um, rugby referee that has come out gay. Um, he suffered from um, um, mental health issues when he was growing up, and bulimia and stuff. And the one, you know, sad time he, he tried to take his own life. Um, so every, all that's in the book. But it's he's he's a type of character. Um, all this has happened in his life, but he's really uh, funny, and he's, he he looks on the positive side of things now. And and um, he's he's a um, he presents lots on on S four C the uh, Welsh um, channel, and um, he's um, does lots of um, comical things uh, like sketches and stuff like that. So it's it's a it's a brilliant read if you like sport, but it also it covers quite a few topics as well. So, and one one nice story there was in the book. He um his first game he he refed, um he was about sixteen seventeen it was um in a town where where I um. Where, next to where I live, um, in Chagaron. So he had, he couldn't drive up to the game because he's too young to drive. So um, he had a lift up with the opponent's team. So, <laughs> so he didn't want to arrive in Chagaron on the bus with, with the opponent's team. So he told them to drop him off on the square in Chagaron and he'd walk up to the rugby club. So, because um, he didn't want to show favoritism towards that team. So, um, 
okay, that's what happened. He, he was dropped off and he, he walked up. Everything was good. Unfortunately, Trigaron lost that match against the team. So oh, they no. all so they all went back to the rugby club for some food and some, you know, drinks. And um um the chairman of that club then, when the bus was ready to leave, shouted at Nigel saying, Come on, Nigel, the bus is leaving. Well, you could imagine the the um <laughs> Reaction the Chicago lads had then when they knew that he had a lift with the referee. So, um, <laughs> and it, I don't think he's ever been back to Chicago, he says in the book. So, um... I, yeah, I don't know how I go back either. <laughs> so, uh, look, I like, I like um, books that are based within Wales and and uh, um, about Welsh characters and stuff like that, you know, because we've got a rich history and um, of um, um old folk tales and old stories you know and we we like to us well, like to cling on to stuff like that so um <laughs> and and um he's 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 called a, he's one of the characters in wales now you know he's 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 funny he's on telly and stuff so um yeah it's a it's a good great read so my book is this historical fiction i'm going to do a historical fiction one um like julia too it's called silence of stone and it is by anna marie beckel and it is a novel based around a true story um it's um of i'm gonna i'm gonna say this name terribly because it's french and my french is terrible so i apologize in advance to all of our viewers um it's a novel of marguerite de robeval so the story takes place in 1542 um and she, her uncle was her guardian and he takes her to what was going to be a settlement um, in Newfoundland called New France, um, and he abandons her. She falls in love with a sailor on the ship, and he decides that this is scandalous and it's you know horrible. So he abandons her, her lover, and a sort of lady's maid on what they called the Isle of Demons, which for a long time was thought to be an island off the coast of Newfoundland, but in recent, in more recent history. They feel that it may have been a harbor in Quebec. Um, so they're not 100% sure where exactly um, the Isle of Demons was. But um, Anna Marie Beckel um, did a substantial amount of research about Marguerite and her story um, and wrote a fictional story from Marguerite's perspective of her time on the Isle of Demons because she survived on the Isle of Demons for essentially two years, but one of those years was by herself. So her lover and the lady's maid that was with her both died um, fairly early on. And she survived almost an entire year by herself before she was accidentally rescued. Um, and it's a really good story. I mean, our, the author did a really excellent um, job of combining the history with fiction. So you learn a lot about the woman herself, but because it was in 1542 and the accounts of her experience are very, very biased by the people who took those accounts, um, they wanted to paint her in a certain light. So you don't know what yeah. the real yeah. truth is, yeah, right? you know yeah, 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 yeah. truth is, right? So the, I think the author did a really good job of kind of kind like balancing that. it out. <laughs> okay, my turn. Next book, um, Two Trees Make a Forest by jessica j lee have you heard of this book before no no i'm i'm quietly searching for the books on the I'm on our catalog when as we speak just just, just <laughs> what the <laughs> I, 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 but, so but we haven't <laughs> do you have a care package amir <laughs> yeah we'll do huh? a care package we'll do a care package yes. before you send it to you <laughs> yes yeah, send, send I, i'll come over and get them don't worry excellent <laughs> Absolutely, we'll have tea. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Two Trees Make a Forest by Jessica J. Lee is my next book. And um, she is learning about her family's heritage from Taiwan. Um, and so she goes to Taiwan and she's immersed in the geography and the, the landscape and nature. So when I was reading about this book, they were talking about that it was na uh, natural literature is kind of like a term that they were using uh, where people um, write about immersive experiences within nature. And so um, 
it's so it's kind of a layered story. So it's about her family, uh, where they came from and their history, and then Tai Taiwan and all the natural beauty of Taiwan. But I like I like uh, like she describes things to the utmost degree. Um, but sometimes that's okay. Sometimes I don't like it if it, if it's a story that has like a really driving plot and then they get bogged down with like describing every little tiny detail. You just want to choke the author and say, get to the point. Yeah. Uh, but this one is, I really enjoy, like she, um, in one part of it, she goes to a, uh, what they call a drowned cedar lake. So the cedars are underwater. And really? Yeah. And cool. yeah, it's really cool. And she talks about these, um, Formosan flame crest birds. They're not they're not found anywhere else on earth but Taiwan. And she uh -huh. actually sees some and she's yeah, it's really cool. So um this is one of those books. It's a nonfiction book, but it's one of those that will take you away to another place. So if you want to travel and go someplace without leaving home, this would be a good book. Excellent. Cool. Uh, is, uh, my, my next one is similar. Yeah, so it's um, Drift by um, Karen Lewis. She's a Welsh author. She's um, she's won several um, like um, Welsh Book of the Year. I think she's won about twice. I think um, so. She's she writes in Welsh, but this is a, a debut novel in English. Um, so she's had a um, co um, um, contract by Penguin Books to to write her first novel. So um, it's big, um, and she lives locally. She lives in now without um next to Abra Swift. So um, have you had her so at she, the library? Uh, no, she we're planning to. So um, oh, cool. so she's um um, and it's a big thing though because she um um she had a, she's been signed with a quite a big financial um incentive to write in English. So um, it's it's a bit of excitement around here regarding the, her new book. So oh, most, it, it could could get it out in America. I'm not sure. Um, so um. And it's about it's, it's I like how she well I personally I I haven't read it. I've got this from the library. It came in for for me as a reservation only yesterday. So um I was planning to um read a bit, but um I haven't got time to read it. Are you are you similar to me? Where um you get loads of books and people come into the library, oh you've got to read that book, got to read that book, and you've got a massive pile. I think yes. all all librarians are the same, you know. And my, it, it drives my wife. Gab, gab, because you know I've got, I take in a, a, like ten books home, and they're there for about three weeks. I have an overdue letter saying, "Bring, please, bring your library books back." And I bring <laughs> them all back, and I haven't read nothing. So, um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> uh, I, I, it's, 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 you know, I'm, and every time I take them home, my wife says, "You're not going to read them. Take them back." And I said, "No, no, I'm a librarian. I will read them." But I don't. So anyway, so this one I I will read. I promise. I've got to read it. But um, and it's, I like how she in, involves like the Welsh and the Welsh culture with it. So I think it's um, it's about um, we we had quite a few Syrian refugees um come over in into this part of Wales um a few years back, and um um, I read she was on the in the bookseller magazine, and she said that um she was um inspired by a, a person who moved um due to the conflict in Syria to. West Wales, and he's um um he's learned the language, he's learned Welsh and everything, um wow. and and she thought that, found that inspirational that somebody has moved from Syria to West Wales and found that he had to learn the language because you know it's you know um not it's everyone so speaks Welsh so language to learn no 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 so um so that's um as I, said, I haven't read it but that's the rest of the story is um that someone from Syria has moved to the area. And um, there's some kind of relationship started and stuff like that. So um, with with a um, person from 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 West Wales. So um, yeah. So that's one of what I'm going to read. So yes, that's beautiful. I'm gonna have to investigate see if it's been published in in uh, North America because that looks yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it is, and I like how she's how they've um so that at the start of the book there's a, a poem in Welsh and that's translated to English, and then on on the start of each chapter then um the um the chapters is in Welsh um English and then um, Arabic, so um oh, it's, oh, it's, wow. it's, it's nice little touch you know. Yeah, it is lovely. So. It's very thoughtful. Yes. It's very thoughtful. Yes. So um yes. She, um, uh, I think one or two other, other books have been translated to English, but this is her first one she's written in English. 
So um, yeah, Carla Wiss. Yes. Actually, I'm going to have to investigate her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, when I say her name, Carol Lewis, it doesn't sound nearly as nice as what he says. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No. <laughs> oh, it's, it's my strong Welsh accent that does this. You know, um, it's perfect. And he, and he subtitles on the bottom. People don't understand what a word I say. I understand, <laughs> I understand what you're saying. It's <laughs> the same thing about Newfoundlanders, though, that, that we our accent is so thick and so different from other places that we need subtitles when we talk to. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> but I, I find that fascinating that you know the language and stuff you know, like within wales we've got you know we're only a small country you know but we've got different dialects within wales like north wales speaks totally different to what south wales does you know it's it's really interesting and within our county you know people say a few words differently but you know only an hour's drive from each other it's really fascinating our language can change within just a small border you know it's well it's, it's, it's... like in newfoundland i saw um, it must have been it was either an article or a might have been an advertisement like a, a tourism advertisement and it came across the top saying a hundred different dialects within this province and i'm like wow yeah <laughs> yes it's 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 it's, yeah. it's, it's... A lot. and yeah. with people like carrie lewis if they don't write about these things and you know and you know it, we lose them, or, or, or you know, when we, you know, gen, you know, generations will go without knowing, like you know, stories and you know, um, as we said earlier about you know, traditions, traditional stories and things. You know, if we don't write them down and talk about them, we lose them. You know, that, that'd be sad. Yeah, that would be. You're last. I'm last. So I have a completely different book to everything else we talked about today. So the last book I'm going to talk about, I don't have a copy of it here because I read it as an ebook. And it's called The Library by Bella Osborne. She's a UK author. Um, and she wrote this lovely story about um, a library in a little village um, that was going to lose its funding. So it's about this little old lady um, who is very heavily invested in the library, is part of their book club, absolutely loves the library. and. It's also about this teenager who kind of ends up at the library more by accident. And the two of them form a friendship because the library becomes so meaningful to both of them. And when the but when their funding is threatened, they band together to try and save the library. Um, and it's really delightful. It's a book that is, um, it deals with really hard subjects. So it does deal with alcoholism. It deals with loneliness, with grief. Um, but it does it in a way that is, um, it's, it's done within a very sweet story. So you, it doesn't feel depressing or dark. Um, and it ends on a really kind of uplifting um, note. Well, Imre, it was really, really nice talking to you today. No problem. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>